Hamas. Three letters stand for one goal, the crippling of Israel's economy. Beginning in 2005, the boycotts, divestment and sanctions campaign is sadly now a movement of global proportions. Today, SodaStream is the latest whipping boy for the left. The Israel-based beverage machine maker has suffered setbacks since the most recent outbreak of clashes in Gaza. While this week, infamous British MP George Galloway declared the northern city of Bradford an Israel free zone. Meanwhile, boycotts have cost Israel's agricultural sector over 100 million shekels. That's the equivalent of 30 million U.S. dollars in the past year alone. But Israel's freedom-loving allies are bent on turning the tide. In what's been called a boycott, the aim of the counter campaign is simple. Show your support for the Middle East's only democracy by purchasing products marked Made in Israel. From Mahava Beauty products to SodaStream to Sabra Hummus, there are plenty of places to park your dollars. But my personal favorite? Israeli-made firearms. Israel's geographical position between hostile neighbors has meant constant threats to her very existence. But necessity being the mother of invention, Israel has now become one of the world's top manufacturers in small arms. The country is birthplace to the iconic Uzi submachine gun, Galil rifle, and the mammoth Desert Eagle of Hollywood fame. But Israel's latest wonder gun takes things to a whole different level. Meet Israeli weapons industries TAR-21 or Tavor. Developed in close cooperation with the Israel Defense Forces, the Tavor was created to adapt to the urban combat Israeli troops experienced in the first Lebanon war. The rifle entered limited service in 2003 and has since seen action in the 2006 Lebanon war and most recently in Gaza. Today, all IDF infantry units are being transitioned to the Tavor as their primary rifle. A shorter version, the Micro Tavor, is also being introduced. This thing is battle proven. Mud, sand, water, drop it, drive over it. It can handle it all. And this isn't just a safe queen. A full length civilian version has been available in Canada since 2007. In a weird twist of fate, we could actually buy one of these bad boys before our neighbors to the south. And while US consumers can now buy a Made in America Tavor, us Canadians, well, we still get the rifles marked Made in Israel. These sporting rifles are built to be semi-automatic only and feature an overall length of above 26 inches in its bullpup configuration. The bullpup configuration has quite a few advantages as opposed to your traditional rifle. What you find is that rather than the magazine being in front of the trigger, it's behind and that means that you can fit in a lot more barrel and a lot less space. Just take a look when you compare the Tavor to your traditional AR. Here we've got a 16 inch barrel from here to here, whereas this, you'd never be able to tell, is 18 and a half inch barrel and a much more compact frame. This Tavor includes a full length Picatinny rail, integrated backup iron sights, while the owner of this rifle has added on an EOTech hollow sight for easy acquisition. One of my favorite features about the Tavor is because of its size and how compact it is, I'm able to get my elbows in tight. And what you notice is that that really allows you to easily transfer from one shot to the next, seamlessly going from one target to another. And the Tavor is a cinch to field strip. Just pull out the back like this. As you can see, everything conveniently comes out in one piece. When you're ready, stick it back in there and you're ready to rock and roll. With simple field stripping capabilities and excellent ergonomics, it's easy to see why the parent system of this rifle has seen field use by the IDF while hitting a target market among civilians worldwide. Just nine months after entering the U.S. market, the Tavor rifle was selected as the 2014 Rifle of the Year. And at a price of roughly $2,800, any law-abiding gun-licensed Canadian can own Israeli firepower while fighting back at the boycott. Faith Goldie at Silverdale Gun Club in St. Anne's, Ontario.